We're going to look at forces, and in particular pulleys, and an application with the bosun's chair. So we're going to introduce the ideas of pulleys, and because they're a simple machine, uh, we're going to look at other simple machines uh, as well. So what does a simple machine we're using in everyday life do? It decreases the work that needs to be done the effort that needs to be put in. And here are some examples, and you can pause and review the simple machines you've already looked at. And with a pulley, you are reducing the force needed to move an object compared to moving it without the assistance of a pulley. And the pulley system allows the force to be applied uh, in a more convenient direction. With a single pulley, uh, instead of standing over the weight and lifting it upwards, you can actually use your own uh, mass uh, as part of the force to uh, lift the, the weight. So the downwards pull is often easier. Uh, but is there a difference in the force needed? Uh, what other forces are acting on the pulley system? the effort to pull down and the force to lift it up directly against the force of gravity. There's friction over the pulleys. There's tension on the rope. Uh, most uh, in the calculations we do, we'll assume the system is frictionless. Uh, why is it better to have more than one pulley? Uh, let's have a look at that. The top pulley is going to be fixed uh, to a clamp, the ceiling, something rigid enough for the uh, load that you're lifting, and the lower pulley is not fixed. So why does the lower pulley have to move? Well, the objective is to raise a particular load. And what's going to happen to the rope on the right, where it's being pulled, the effort, uh, compared to uh, the height that the weight is going to be moved. So the sum within that green circle, how far each of the ropes moves, you sum those together and that will be the whole distance, longer distance, that the effort has to be moved. So how much easier with more than one pulley system? Uh, count the ropes between the pulleys. And look at number two there, the just shown as a shorter rope holding the two pulleys together. You count that as well. So here there are three. So using a pulley system, it's three times easier. You're going to use a third of the effort and the mechanical advantage is going to be three. So we're counting the the ropes, you can count the one here, and each rope goes goes over a separate pulley. There's one behind another. Uh, you're not uh, winding them several times around, around the same, same pulley. And so some questions here. What's the mechanical advantage? And you can pause as you do this. So count the number of strings, and there you have your answers, and you can um, answer those. And here's a number of questions, and we're just going to go through one of these examples uh, that's here. But mechanical advantage, okay, it equals the number of uh, strings between pulleys. It also equals the load, what you're lifting, divided by the effort, uh, the pull that is being applied to the single rope to lift the load. And so here's the load on the diagram. Uh, identify the effort and the magnitude of each. And so we're going to put load over effort, 100 over 33 and one third uh, newtons for both. And so the mechanical advantage is three. So the effort required is a third that of the lifting the mass directly. Next question is, um, we're looking at the number of strings and we want to know the distance moved. 
so in this diagram, the H is 10 centimeters. We're lifting it 10 centimeters. So each of the strings between the pulleys will go up 10 centimeters. So that means that the effort, uh, the rope on the left side of the pulley system here, uh, has to extend by 30 centimeters to lift the load uh, by 10. So you're multiplying it by three. Uh, so here we have mechanical advantage again, and you can pause it and work out the other ones as well. And one application is the bosun's chair, being able to lift someone um, uh, using, using a pulley system. Uh, so when you're setting up the chair, attach it very firmly to the topmost point. Um, so here it's a roof beam. Have enough space because the effort rope will move much further. Attach the rope uh, securely to the stool because that's holding the person being lifted. Don't overlap the ropes. Each one should go separately over a pulley. And very importantly here, the student has to hold on tightly. Um, the puller here is using gloves. The person sitting on the stool is holding on tightly and have a spotter behind so that the stool doesn't tip. So here there are two four rope pulleys, top and bottom. And so four ropes on each side and draw a diagram of the pulley system and start with the pulleys and the ropes. To begin with, uh, you can just draw uh, the circles and one rope either side, but it's going to be four. It's a stylized diagram here. And make sure you've got the right number of uh, ropes drawn. So this system, you're reducing the effort um, needed compared to lifting it directly eightfold. Now draw a free body diagram. The load is the student. Show all the forces that are there. Force of gravity, normal force, uh, tension on the rope going upwards from the student, tension on the rope going back from the effort from the student who's pulling, and the lifting force itself. So we've got the, uh, the diagrams there and uh, other things that um, we have here on the diagram. You're going to assume it's frictionless and the pulley system itself is massless. It's just the mass of the student and the, uh, the stool. And uh, you can look more carefully at this using Newton's second law, and we've got the force, uh, the mass, uh, with gravity acting on it, and then the tension on the rope. That's on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you've got um, the rope being massless, uh, so zero mass, and you've got uh, the lift force and the tension on the rope to the left. Uh, supposing we look at a student trying to lift themselves up, so instead of having the force uh, effort on the left, the same student is going to pull downwards on the force to lift themselves up, uh, and the force of gravity on the student and stool is mg, You've got the lift force and the tension. Now, how much easier is it? So what have you actually got? Not with the uh, eight strings here, uh, or if you've got the eight strings, it's going to be eight times easier. Uh, but supposing it just goes over a single pulley, uh, what have you got here? 
So we're looking at the, uh, the forces here uh, that are applied and with one pulley uh, lifting. So essentially there are two ropes between the, the load and uh, uh, the same student is really acting in the place of the second pulley. So what you're doing here is you are reducing the effort just lifting uh, um, him or herself up. The force required is going to be a half. So the right hand side, which is the mass of the student and the tension on the rope. On the left hand side, the lifting force uh, the lifting force equals the tension on the rope. So between them, the uh, we get the uh, the mass of the student and the stool. The gravity acting on it is going to be two F. So the force required is going to be a one half. So it allows you to lift yourself with one half um, the force compared to lifting yourself directly. And thanks again to Mr. Jollymore from Team Science with his 10th grade physicists.